Yes, thank you, Jill. Good afternoon. And uh, we understand Judd Trump had a bit of a nightmare journey here. He was stuck for the best part three hours in uh, on the motorway because it was an thank accident. Thank you. But the first so thankfully, he's made it here. Judd Trump to break. And of course, he's feeling great right now. He's already won two tournaments this season. Shanghai Masters and the new Saudi Arabia Masters as well, where he picked up that half a million. In terms of the head-to-head, -head, it's 4-4. Milkins won the first four and Trump's won the last four. So Milkins' last win was back in 2012. He's not having the best of seasons in contrast to Trump. He's won just one match, actually. That was to qualify for the Wuhan Open, which is coming up in a couple of weeks' time. Can't believe Milkins, when the draw came out, would have been punch in the air somehow. Remember, this is sort of FA Cup style. This is round one, and he's drawn the world number one. One. Yeah, the opening shot he played, Rob Milkins, was not overly convincing, but we'll see how we get on here because he's quite an unpredictable player. He might play brilliantly today. For all we know, he's not one you can be sure of what's going to happen. Awkward Judd queuing. Trump. One. I saw him actually coming into the building, Judd. He was uh, probably a bit stressed. I mean, I don't know where he did arrive from, but if he came in from, say, Bristol, sometimes dangerous, isn't it? You're not that far from home and you leave the more suitable hour. Whereas maybe if you live further away, they come the night before. So anyway, he's here. And uh, Rob has not really threatened the pocket with his first two shots. Best of seven. So again, got to be on the ball. And as Dave said, he's not really done any winning this season. He can go in and out of form at this game, and right now he's not in the best of it. No, I mean, it's only last year Milkins was number 12 in the world, but he's now dropped out the top 16. Of course, he lives even closer in uh, Gloucester. Just one thing to say right at the start, Judd Trump, career century 998. So he's two to emulate what John Higgins did last week. And that red One. is on target. Seven. Eight. Uh, it's not perfect on either blue, which is a straight shot up into the green pocket with reds on. Blue Pink's ball. more awkward. This is a real test of his queuing early on. A terrific shot. He really did go for that. I mean. There were plenty of risks involved had he missed it, but didn't go cleanly, but Thank he hit it well enough. Fourteen. But just not quite on the blue. A nice angle to get back for a red, or close to a red. Nineteen. It's been made a great start to the season for him. Two titles, another final in China. Last week he didn't seem to play that well, but he still got to the quarterfinals. The English Open, Wu Yiza beat him 5-3, of course, ended up in the final. Made a difference, so getting wrong side of the blues, missed that red. Yeah, makes a huge difference all the time, I think, that positional shot on to blue. Just caught a glimpse of the bottom red appears to go to the right corner. Well, it did. Maybe the black's in the way, I'm not sure, but I thought for a second it went. Oh, oh, clearly not. 
he's such a natural player, Rob Milkins. Very instinctive. You know, he's good. He's really good. But not yet. Bit of a blow, I suppose, dropping out of the 16, or because he's not as used to it as some. But he was there. One. Yeah, he got close to that last red, but that was the problem. The red stayed by the pocket. Trump uh, in this British Open has not fared too well. Of course, he came back to the calendar three years ago. He lost last 32 that year, last 16 the following year. Last year, last 64 to Hamad Mir. So when you consider the considerable success he's had elsewhere, this tournament, not yet anyway, one of his best. Time Seven. yet to put that right. Eight. See again that that red will not pass the black to 14. the right corner. But the other red just goes. 15. Nineteen. Okay. Twenty. One over two in the fifty eighth minute, but Mark Allen does have the pink to lead Gary Wilson three two. It's been an unbelievable battle on the brown there. And as Trump pots this pink, Mark Allen has potted that one as well. Remember, that's live on ITVX. 26. done quite well because he could have hit the black on the way through to those few reds. 33. He's not over the line yet, of course. 75 on, six reds left. Six reds and blacks and all the colours, that is. It becomes 34. 67 left now for Milkins, now that that red's potted. So it looks like the Trump lead and the points remaining are going to overtake one another in a minute. And taking him three scoring visits, but he looks OK. He, he didn't won. particularly enjoy himself in the English last week. He probably would have done had he won it, but... You know, he's 42. very much the man in form. Yeah, he's still hard to beat. I mean, he didn't sort of get on with the table last week and... Maybe he was a little less motivated than normal after Saudi, but he still came within a couple of frames of the semis. 49. One safe red here, but there is a chance to make a century. 50.
58. Looks to me like he's intending to screw into the red up the table off this red. Take it the red out and land on maybe the 64. blue. 64. That will be the plan. He's sure to play the cannon here. Always a worry that you're never entirely sure where the cue ball's going to finish playing the cannon off a red. And now he's an awkward queuing shot. So, excellent stuff. <laughs> Didn't look like the kind of frame where he's going to potentially knock in a century, not the way it started. 71. It does 72. now. 72. Seventy-seven. Yeah, despite being stuck in traffic this morning, he's hit the ground running in this match. Robert Milkins, his first shot actually. Seventy-nine. A, a real wide. And then he had a couple more chances, but nothing doing. Well, I guess they say playing snooker and 82. playing sport can be stressful, but he probably feels it's stress-free if he's been panicking about getting here to play the match. You know, you're on the motorway. It's a horrible sinking feeling that. 86. Whatever happens is out of your hands. You're marooned on a motorway. He's in a very safe space here, and he's just expressing himself. 91. It's been a terrific break and fluently made as well. 97. So this black for career century 999. Nine, nine. 104 in the range, Terrific clearance. We may see something very special here this afternoon. One to go for the thousands. He leads Robert Milkins here 1-0. So century clearance from Judd Trump has launched this second match of the day here on table one of the Unibet British Open. Remember, Thank you, it's the a, a random draw, an FA Cup Robert style draw, so these have all been pulled out the hat. And these matches held over from, they w was uh, some first round matches a few weeks ago, been held over for the venue. As I say, Milkins, when, when the news came through, I doubt was that happy. Because he is struggling for form in general. But, you know, Mark Allen and Gary Wilson, two members of the top 16, of course, they're playing each other. It's 3 2 to Allen on table two. I suppose there's an argument that Judd would have looked at the draw and thought, well, this could be easier, playing someone who's won a couple of ranking events in the last three or four seasons now, but it's all about being in form. And, uh, I don't know, maybe right now Rob Milkins, with no form behind him, he's been thrust on the match table playing Judd, mightn't be the way he wanted things to go. So, yeah, it's a very tough draw. But and at his best, of course he can win. Just looks a bit subdued, doesn't he, in the early shots here, the Milton. One. Boy, as Trump is anything but, yeah, Mil Milkins is short of matches, whereas, of course, Trump has played so much this season. So he's in again. Yeah, I mean, you can get to the point in your career where... You know, you know you're playing on the match table and it should be good, but you think, well, I wouldn't mind just Six. being away on one of them other outside tables to get a bit of confidence behind me. Because you, you're under the spotlight, aren't you? Playing here. Seven. Judd's got all the ranking points he's going to need for him and a few others. Having one in Saudi, he's got no problems.
Yeah, 14. for those that don't know, the rankings is based on prize money. So every pound that you earn is also a ranking point. And of course, the half a 15. million there means he's well clear now. Mark Allen did start the season at the top. It's a good shot, that. Well, the prize money in Saudi, of course, was basically identical to the World 22. Championships in the last 32 onwards. The amount of money those players were going to win equated to what happens at Sheffield. The 23. A lot more work, of course. Two and a half weeks of it at the Crucible. Not hanging around here, not overthinking shots. 30. Thirty-one. Thirty-six. Thirty-seven. Just taking a couple of reds out of that bunch of five that were tightly bunched, but not now. Playing on the pink. I don't think conditions last week in Brentwood were conducive to maybe everyone's liking. You know, someone like Judd weren't splitting all that well. Some of the players managed it, of course. 44. Namely, the two finalists. Got to hit the balls harder and make things happen. But the conditions, despite the terrible weather down here in Cheltenham, look terrific today. Ball seems to be zipping around. 49. So this for the half century. It's his 20th season on 50. tour, so he's averaging 50 centuries a season. Now, early on in his career, there weren't as many tournaments. Last season, he made 79. He's made 102 before now in a season. Pretty relentless scoring. 52. I mean, you don't know, it's almost like the chicken and egg scenario, isn't it, with making all the centuries? I mean, if you're playing well and scoring well, you're making the big breaks, but also you're winning more matches and got more chance to knock in the centuries. So, which one comes first? You've got to be playing well, but you've got to be active throughout the season. 60. He absolutely terrific. He's not happy with, not so much the pot, but just the cannon to get onto his next colour. Maybe the black. Well, that was played 61. without too much fuss. Ronnie O'Sullivan, of course, was the first to get to 1,000, very memorably in Preston at the age of 43. John Higgins, 49 years of age last week when he did it. Judd Trump is 35. Yes, and as you can see from that, 67 and... 67 on, so the next red means another frame is gone. Then it's a question of how many. There's two reds right close to the... 67. Pink that Tatiana Willison just respotted. Could conceivably be a stumbling block. They're all tied up. 68. Seventy-five. Seventy-six. Now, that's annoying. He's not got the angle. He might have to play the brown or something lower value. Taking the cue ball round the angles. Because, again, the blue can't get very close to a ball. So now, of course, this has become a missable shot now, positionally. 
He could do little else but land on it. A two one. Jet Trump. I'll have to wait. A two one. For the thousands, eighty one. That's what in the frame. But Robert Milkins, who's had little table time, he's going to come and play a few shots here. One. <coughs> Yeah, and I don't blame him for that. He's had no table time. He can perfectly within his rights to do that. The frame's gone, and I don't think he's even got any interest. In fact, he has conceded after a couple of frame conceded. Frame, Judd Trump. Yeah, it's Trump's frame. He's made breaks of 104 and 81. Firmly on top and halfway towards a place in round two of this British Open. Day one in a very rainy Cheltenham, but the sun shining on world number one Judd Trump Thank right you, now. Frank having a great Lee. season Judd and having Trump a great day so far. 2 0 over Robert Milkins. He's won the first two frames very comfortably. I can tell you, though, that Tom Ford, of course, a top 16 member, is out. He's been beaten 4 3 by Chinese rookie Gong Chen Zi. Neil Robertson, who won the English Open so memorably last night, plays tomorrow against Chris Totten. And uh, the man he beat, Wu Yizza, will be up against Chris Wakelin, who was a semi-finalist in Brentwood. Still got a chance, this red. One. All gifts, gratefully received. Yellow ball. Yeah, it doesn't amount to anything. It has to play Robert safe Milken's there. One. Uh, not a huge fluke. I guess if you leave the red that he fluked over the pocket, then it just leaves Judd Trump in again. So it's better than nothing, that going in. I thought it was worth going for. Cubal coming around two cushions and not leaving an easy starter again. Doesn't like it because the cue ball's just heading towards other reds unpredictably. This one is a slightly acute potting angle. Great shot. One. Would be wrong to assume that Milkins could not play a part in this match. Just needs to get an early foothold into a frame. Yeah, we know how well he can play, and when he reels frames off, he looks as good as anybody. Three. He's got that natural style that you mentioned. Four. Sort of had a late resurgence, didn't he, when he won in Gibraltar two years ago, and then. 2023, the Welsh Open, plus the uh, the big bonus prize they had as well. But as I say, since then, form's been a little erratic. Nine. Ten. Just to say the eventual winner will play either Ryan Day, who won this title two years ago, or Leicester's Louis Heathcote. They're up later this afternoon. He's not on his spot. It's as close oh, as possible. Okay, sorry, sorry. Oh, well, he's made a miscalculation, I think, there. He uh, assumed that the pink would go below the bunch. But it, it kind of it doesn't go on its spot. But Tatiana Wollaston 
Has seemed to think that is the closest it can go to its spot. There's a bit of an oversight. He still might be on the red. Tatiana Williston, I think, one of the very best referees on the tour. Thank you. Sixteen. So whether he likes it or not, that's where it goes. It might have just scuppered him here. It's the sort of miscalculation anyone can make. But he can get through, I think. Although Tatiana, once again, is there, isn't she, on the scene? Prowling. Looking for any kind of a foul. Pink first or simultaneous red and pink, that would be a foul. Tatiana's on the case. No, there's nothing wrong with that. 17. Man, nice shot. Really nice shot. Perfectly on the red above the black. 22. Twenty-three. Yeah. Yeah, didn't like the contact there. Thirty. Robert Milkins, yeah, well, it was a bad contact. It caused him to lose position. So it's a promising opening that, in the end, didn't come to as many as he wanted. Just trying to sort of hold on in this match at the moment after Trump's great start. Two frame winning breaks. One. Now, I think the cue will stopped just about where it has because he potted the red on the thick side. Had it gone in the middle of the pocket, it would certainly have gone into bolt that cue ball. You can get to the potting angle here. Yeah, difficult shot close to it. Judd Trump, one. Wilkins is starting to play a part in this match now and must get this frame one with the minimum of fuss from his second good chance. One. <clears throat> Eight. Nine. Seems that uh, Wilson and Allen on table two are going the distance. Gary Wilson at the snooker's required stage in frame six. <laughs> Allen was in, broke down. Sixteen.
17. Deserves to be on one that was well played. The red is closest to, if it just slipped past the pink, it would be... 24. ...probably deserved. Quite a bold shot to play into those reds at that pace. You can get through to pot it. 25. Well, this is the, the black, but certainly a red to follow it. Gets him off the mark. He is an 32. enjoyable player, I think, to watch, Robert Milkins. He's got sort of this apparently easy way about the table. We know it's not easy, of course. 33. Yeah, I mean, just someone which points the cue, isn't he? You can have all of the uh, methodology you like. You can have a drill. You can play all these different ways. 40. But he, in his case, <laughs> point the cue, see ball, pop ball. I've never really seen him any different to that. Got a very good eye. Yeah, and in the end, it's been a good frame for him. He needed something 47. to happen to stop the uh, the Trump onslaught. He's capable, as I said earlier, of winning frames very quickly and putting pressure on even the best in the world. Fifty-three. Fifty-three. Fifty-seven. Fifty-nine. Because he can't make a century here. He's actually not made one all season, so it just shows you it's been a disappointing campaign thus far for Milkins, but maybe here in Cheltenham... 62. ..is where things will start to look up. Certainly, if he won today, what an injection of confidence that'd be. He's won this frame with a good 62. Robert Milkins, so 62. Robert Milkins and on the friend. scoreboard. And Judge Trump's lead is reduced to 2-1. So, Robert Milkins, in the end, dominated that third frame. He won it Thank with a break of 62. Robert Milkins, Trails Judge Trump 2-1. Trump's at 104 and 81. That second effort could have been another century, could have been his thousandths of his career. But the main thing for him, he's here to win matches, and the rest will look after itself. Yeah, it's been a very open three frames between these pair. Not a lot of safety drawn out or anything. Mark Allen and Gary Wilson in a decider. Ding Jun Wee and Aaron Hill also on table three in a decider. And Tom Ford has lost a decider to Gong Chen Zi. Just joining us, Mark Williams, the defending champion, was beaten 4-1 by Malaysia's Rory Thor. One. Well, that's a beauty, that really is. And if anything, got too much on the cue ball. It's one of those shots, isn't it? You know, if you are going to play it, you have to get it. Robert Milkins, one. That you did have you know, the alternative. We players don't really play now just to roll up behind something, but. 
And also, you're hitting it so hard, that brown, that the accuracy to a middle pocket has to be absolutely A1. One. Just one. presenting Judd Trump, of all people, with a chance early in the frame he knows is the worst thing he could do. Eight. I think there's a, a feeling in the back of your mind. I, mean, I can't speak for Dave Hendon alongside me, but every time 13. Judd gets in there, you think, is he going to make the century here? Well. The game isn't quite that easy, but you know, he's made so many. He's on the brink of a thousand. We thought he would do it in frames at one point. But every time he comes to the table with reds left, it's in your mind, I think. Obviously, he's got a match to win here. It's certainly true, he's from the generation that just looks to kill frames off in one visit. That will be his plan. 20. Whether he gets there or not, we'll see. Whether it's a century or not, we'll see. Twenty-one. Yes, I mean... Uh, John Higgins got there with the 1,000 last week in Brentwood. Didn't win the match he was playing. 27. So the old adage that you know, a century just wins you one frame. Of course, two, run him two frames. But the match did not go his way. That will always be the most important thing. Playing that cannon on the black. He's got a slight angle, but not a particularly wide angle on it. And he has to try and get back for a red. Such a great effort, you know. Deserves to be on something because that sort of top spin, it's hard to generate 35. real speed so that when you go into the bunch, they open. Judd Trump. Balance sometimes between attack and defence. In a sh shot like this, trying to get the cue ball to the bulk end, which was not easy with at one point two reds up there.
Yeah, he was waiting, wasn't he, to see what kisses there'd be or could he avoid kisses. It has not finished good for Milkins. Trump already 34 in front. One. That's not the worst kiss, especially with an angle, I think, on the black, just to stun up for red. Eight. Nine. So either it's a question of going 15. into the reds from the pink, which is on the blue spot, of course. But he did look at a plant possibly there. Now, if there were two reds set to the right corner, he wouldn't play to open them. He'd obviously play on the plant instead. I think we can safely say from that there is a two-ball plant that's available to him. Top two reds, just 23. off set. You'd have to play it, probably, to just play down on the black, I would think. 23. That way you're hitting the plant in the right place. Well, Milkins has played the sort of game you'd expect him to open and attacking, but in this frame they've not been going in. And Judd Trump 31. should be there, 65 in front already. This black for a 72 point lead with 59 on, and it's not taken long. It's only been playing 41 minutes. Thirty-eight. The angle was not perfect. You have to put a bit extra into the cue ball there. 54. A hard stun shot to get into the two reds. 55. Playing with the sort of confidence of a man who's just won a half a million pound pot in the event in Saudi. You know, all of his points are already in the bag for the season and beyond. 62. Biggest worry was actually making 63. it here in Cheltenham today with all the traffic, but he looks like he's got a fairly carefree approach in a good way. 60. Yeah, maybe he'd been at a meeting with his bank manager because he's already earned this season just shy of 800,000. We're still in 69. September. Yeah, he's probably in a position where the bank manager still would like to meet him, but the days when you can see your bank manager seem to be long gone now. That's your Judd Trump, as you say. Just once a Saudi, come out and greet you, biscuits, everything. 74. Well, he deserves it all. He's played so well. He made that great clearance, of course, against Williams in Riyadh. And he'd be ready for another week here. Whatever the tournament, whatever the trophy, he wants to win it. Judd Trump, and 74. And from the round two here in Cheltenham. It's only taken 43 minutes. He leads Robert Milkins 3-1. 3-1 it is to Judd Trump here on day one in Cheltenham. Nice big Thank crowd in despite five. the weather. Judd Maybe Trump it's the best place to be inside. And Trump, well and truly at the races here. He needs one more to take on either Ryan Day or Louis Heathcote. They're actually just getting going on table four in their match.
Yeah, they've not been hanging around. Look at the average frame time, 10 minutes, 42 seconds. Yeah, it's quick, isn't it? And it's been open snooker as well, not any safety duels or any kind. Mark Allen looking good now to beat Gary Wilson. He's 50 in front on table two with just 35 on. So Wilson playing for snookers. And he's just got one. Well, Gary Wilson, he won a, a semi-final last season in Scotland, needing three in the decider against Shoei Long. So he will not have given that up yet. Well, not to be, and now he'll be concerned that that might be his last shot from what we've seen this afternoon. He sort of trudges back to his seat. One. Eight. Nine. The applause is for Mark Allen, the world number three. Not having the best of seasons, but we know what a battler he is. And he's beaten Gary Wilson 4-3. Took a, a long time, but he's got the job done. Yeah, I mean, another match in this open draw, not a nice pairing for either of them, really, and Alan has got the job done. 17. Yeah, the average frame time in that match is 26 minutes, so it was obviously a bit more attritional. And I can tell you that he will play now Aaron Hill, because he's beaten Ding Jun Wee 4-3, a great win for the Cork professional, 24. Aaron Hill. Seems to have a good record against some top players, and that's another big scout. 25. Well, this could be the best 32. thing that he's got this angle, because he'll just have reds here off the bunch, playing through on the black. So it's certainly taken one out 33. into play. Fifth black coming up. <laughs> That'd be some way to make your thousand century, wouldn't it? I think we're maybe asking for a bit too much. Well, you've gone early, Dave. You're asking for the world, aren't you? You know, I'm not content with Fourth. the thousand, which we'd love to see. You know, everyone but Rob Milkins, he doesn't want it against him. He wants to get this match 41. back on track for him. But there's not much he can do about this. Decision time. Two reds. The red up the table is easier to roll in on on a lower value colour. Although the blue now doesn't pot to the left middle because the red's in the way. The red that he's closest to on the right. That's more difficult, but it holds for the black and maybe got two things on the go here. That, as Dave said, the the landmark and uh, stand on the black. Well, we know what he's thinking, don't we? 
Yes, and it wasn't a real a liberty, was it? You know, it was a very measured shot. Well, it's still relatively early days, but this would be something special. It would be special anyway to get to a thousand career centuries, but to do it with a maximum? Well, look, it, it's a wonderful chance, Dave. I mean, where the balls are placed. Never going to be easy from here, but I've seen more difficult chances achieved. 57. It's only the first afternoon. We've already got some real drama here, some real excitement. Yes, and playing into an area like he has, he's sure to be on at least one 64. red to play down on the black as well. And he has. Well, as we always say, first priority, get the frame 65. one, and that's... This black and one more red means Milkins is beaten. Trump is through. And that's beautiful as well. Again, choice of at least three reds. 72. So, as you say, this is frame ball, match ball, and then full concentration on the maximum. Judd Trump has made... 73. Eight in tournament play. That's good enough. Uh, again, I'm not certain that was quite the ready played on, but... 80. It's fine. <laughs> 81. Well, the last thing he wants is awkward queuing because he needs to put a bit into the cue ball, pot in the black, to bounce it up for a red, and from there, I think shot's a little more awkward than it could have been.